Hello, welcome to the Friday, February 24th, 2017 edition of the Sands and its Storm Centers Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Scottsdale, Arizona. The big news today comes from researchers who, with the help of Google's computing resources, were able to find two collisions for SHA-1. For a few years now, it was known that SHA-1 was on its way out, uh, but still, uh, this announcement came somewhat as a surprise. It did take quite significant computing resources still to find this particular collision, but uh, overall, uh, the resources used weren't really all that outrageous the researchers did enumerate it to about $100,000 worth of computing time. The problem that killed SHA-1 in the end was not just that computing time has become cheaper and CPUs and GPUs have become faster, but also that the algorithm wasn't as strong as originally believed. SHA-1 hashes are 80 bits in size, so you would think that you have about 2 to the power of 80 different possibilities here that you have to consider, but due to some weaknesses discovered in SHA-1, in particular by the researchers that were part of this collaboration, the actual number of computations being required is closer to the power of 2 to the power of 66. So that's uh, more than 100,000 times easier than originally believed. And these weaknesses in the algorithm, of course, were no news and they had been announced for a while. So this is why SHA-1 was considered on its way out. Many browsers uh, with the end of the year uh, did no longer trust certificates signed by SHA-1 and of course certificate authorities stopped also issuing new certificates based on SHA-1 signatures. SHA-2, which is based on SHA-256 and SHA-512, is still considered safe enough. So signatures now should definitely use these algorithms. However, there are still plenty of tools that rely on SHA-1. Uh, Git, uh, the source code repository, is uh, one that does. Also, GPG, the new implementation of the PGP algorithm often still considers SHA-1 as an acceptable algorithm for signatures. So if you're using this tool, make sure you configure it to no longer generate signatures based on SHA-1. Now with this known SHA-1 collision that Google found, it's now possible to mount a prefix attack. And that's essentially what uh, Google published here. You can now use uh, these uh, two snippets that result in the same name SHA-1 hash and prefix them to a document and then set up the document so it displays different content depending on which prefix is included. And this is essentially the demo that Google prepared. You can download two PDF documents from Google that display different content and the hash, the SHA-1 hash for these documents is the same. But given that these two colliding snippets are now known, people could prepare whatever document they would like, given that uh, either one of them contains one of these known collisions. So for now, in order to create two documents that display different content, but that result in the same SHA-1 hash, these documents have to include either one of these known collision snippets. And Google set up a little online tool where you can upload a document and it will check the document if it contains that particular collision. But uh, given that computing time is only going to get cheaper, we should just accept it and call SHA-1 dead at this point. And British police today arrested an individual in London who is suspected to be behind the attack against the Deutsche Telekom DSL modems back in November. If you remember, this was attributed to parts of the Mirai botnet. Now, uh, this individual is probably not the actual 
author of the Mirai botnet, but more someone who used this technique to hijack a large number of devices and then use them to attack the Deutsche Telekom. As far as I can tell, neither a British nor German law enforcement has released a name for the individual. Currently, there is an extradition pending for this particular individual to Germany. There is a mention that Cyprus law enforcement was involved, so not clear if this is actually a British national or if uh, this uh, particular individual just happened to be at the airport in London at the time of the arrest. Well, and that's it for today. So not a lot really other than this uh, big news with Shawan. Definitely some weekend reading for you here and uh, talk to you again on Monday. Bye.